Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Welcome to HBC. It's great to see you here. Who's enjoying the sunshine? Yeah, it's only going to get better as well this week, isn't it? Hotter. Not too hot, but hotter. That would be good, wouldn't it? It's great to see you here. It's great that we can come. We can worship together. We can worship God on this Sunday. This Sunday is a mission Sunday. Uh, we're going to be hearing from, uh, from some two different uh, groups of people, two different organizations that uh, we are mission partners with. Welcome to the vocals. You're so... Yeah, go on. Give a round of applause. <laughs> We're so looking forward to hearing from you guys later on, which we'll do in a little bit. And, uh, and Karen Roach from Wycliffe, round of applause as well. <laughs> Karen's going to be bringing God's word to us later in our service too. Uh, we're a church that we, we have a focus on our local, on our local mission, but we have a focus on our world mission as well. God, uh, God calls us to both. He calls us to serve. He calls us to, to go and to share his love and to share his word. And that's what we're going to be looking at today. 
Let's pray together. Father God, would you come by your spirit and would you minister to our hearts again? As we come, would we meet with you? Would you challenge us for your great commission? Would you challenge us in our worship? Would you challenge us in our lives today, we pray, as we open our hearts to you again? Come, Lord Jesus. And minister to us this morning, I pray. In your name. Amen. Let's stand, if we're able, and let's sing together. I'm a friend of God.
um, they were in this country, it was all a bit difficult and sad because we were under COVID restrictions and they were living in Didcot. I compare that with the distance to Nepal, but we couldn't see them. It was so sad, but now it's wonderful. They're all here with us. Now, they are sent by BMS. Every couple of months, they produce a news sheet, and one has just been produced here. So if any of you would like to read this, you may, but later on, they'll tell you more. And um, also, probably, how to get on the list, to get it regularly. So Pippa and Toby are going to come and do a little bit while we're all in here, and then they'll talk to... The, old, uh, the adults later. Can I read the Beano while you're up here? Please do, please do. <laughs> Thank you so much, Cecily. Uh, it's a real pleasure to be here this morning and really looking forward to sharing a little bit uh, and yes, you have mentioned the, the list for prayer letters. We'd love to share our uh, monthly information with you and share that with you. So please, we've got a table over there at the back where you can find the sign-up sheet and we will email you with prayer letters. Also, some information there about our work in Nepal and about BMS's worldwide mission, uh, God's mission, really, but through BMS, yeah, you can find all of that in the back there, and we'd love to talk to you more. Right, let's see where we're at. Um, okay, um, last seen February 2018. Uh, maybe some of you haven't met us yet, and others, you have received some information through the church, but maybe you have got some questions about who we are and what we do. We, uh, we, were, we are church members, but we were last living in Oxford permanently, uh, 2017 and then into January 2018. Uh, but uh, also, just to clarify, maybe there's a little bit of confusion about where we were and for how long. So not seven years in Tibet, but four and a half years in Nepal. Um, wedged between India and China, the two superpowers, Nepal is a landlocked country uh, that is very unique and we'll hope to share a little bit more about that with you. Um, and when you sent us out in 2018, this is sort of what we looked like, Pippa and I. And there's a few facts there about our, ourselves. If you want to pick up on any of these and start a conversation with us later, please do. We look forward to talking to you. Uh, but we didn't just go by ourselves. And this is Jakey, Ella and Millie shortly after we arrived in Nepal. And adventure awaits is a bit of a family motto. Um, so there they are, 2022, and I'll let them introduce themselves. Hi, no, sorry. Hi, um, I'm Jakey, I'm 14 years old, um, and I quite like sports and photography. Hi, uh, hi, my name is Ella, I'm 11 years old, and I like climbing and I like to read. Hi, I'm Mary, I'm 8 years old, and I like kittens and cats. Thank you. So Nepal is super unique, really. If we're looking at this country, the green bit is the flat lands, very close to sea level. And then you can see the distinct hill country. So Ben Nevis would fall within the hill country. Uh, and then we have the real mountains, uh, the highest mountains on earth. And if you think about it, the distance on a, on a north-south axis on the narrowest bit, we are only talking about 100 kilometers, so 60 miles. So between here and London, you'd have the flat lands and then the highest mountains on earth. Um, very, very unique with over 100 different ethnic groups present as well. So very, very quickly, what first comes to mind when someone mentions Nepal to you? Three answers. Himalayas? Earthquakes. Earthquakes. Gurkhas. Gurkhas and Everest. Thank you very much. Very well informed. Um, yes, here we have Mount Everest. And one news story told us recently that it had grown by a meter. Surprising, but... Now, it's all about measuring it and about the Nepalese and Chinese agreeing on the actual height of Mount Everest. <laughs> Second news item, 
glacial melting, global warming, much in the news, not only affecting sea levels, but also affecting the glaciers at high level in the Himalayas. And this article is about increased glacial melting in Nepal. Gurkhas have been mentioned, and these gentlemen here, they're doing a tough trek up a hill with some weights in the doko, in a traditional carrying basket. You can try on a doko there later on. You can also try on some Nepali clothes and take photographs if you want. Uh, but very, very tough to enter the, Gork, the British Gorkha Regiment. But for so many Nepali young people, that's a real option. You know, they really want that. There, there's very few work opportunities. So if you can get a job like that, you're well off. And this is a new story about ladies being allowed to join the Gurkha Regiment as well. Last item, we are the food lovers here. What have we got here? Yes, dal, lentils, and that was uh, linked to Nadia Hussain, the British Bake Off winner, and she cooked that lentil. And uh, rice and lentils very much the Nepali staple diet, and they like it so much they have it not just once a day, but twice a day, every day. Okay, so maybe we're a little bit curious about that, but actually, in a lot of village settings, what can you grow? You can grow rice, you can grow lentils, and you can grow some vegetables. And it very much comes out of the subsistence farming, what you can actually produce for yourselves, because many imported supermarket goods, they're about the same price as here in the UK, which is totally uh, out of people's reach. So there is a reason why people eat dal baht. And one of the things that motivated us to go to Nepal in 2018 was it still is one of the world's 30 poorest countries and on $2 per day income you really cannot buy very much, which makes people struggle uh, and makes people also feel bad about themselves. And they also suffer from a lot of uh, natural disasters due to the ne Nepali to topography and to climate change. So in February 2018, uh, we went to Pokhara, we spent also some time in Kathmandu after that, and I'm going to let the kids share a little bit about some impressions in country. Nepal means that when you go above the clouds, you can still see the mountains. Nepal means that our dad works at the local hospital doing construction. Nepal means that some of the poorest people live in their shacks by the river. Nepal means that wheelchair users and pedestrians are forced to use the main road because the path isn't good enough. Nepal means that transport looks different. <laughs> Two goats on a bicycle? Not unusual. As you can see, there's no passenger limit on this bus. <laughs> Unfortunately, not every road is tarmacked. And driving can be very hazardous. Especially in the rural parts of Nepal. Sometimes you just have to get off your motorbike and walk. Until you come to the remotest communities. Where life is very difficult for the people living there. Nepal means Hinduism. It was formerly a Hindu nation. And uh, what you can see here is some of the ritual puja, or their worship that they do, often daily. Uh, Nepal is 80% Hindu, so most of our neighbours are Hindu. You'll find along the border with Tibet, especially in the mountain areas, 9% are Buddhists. Along the southern border with India, there's a lot more uh, Muslims, but only 4% of the country. Now here we've got 1% to 2% Christians in the country. We don't actually know, but what we do know is that it's the fastest growing or one of the fastest growing churches in the world. Uh, this was a picture of our church in Pokhara when we lived there. They're doing their Christmas celebration. It's a bit different from Headington Baptists. Um, wonderful, committed Christians. Towards your mouth so we can turn down a bit. Towards my mouth? Sure. Is that better? Thanks, okay. Wonderful Christians who have real heart for their fellow Nepalis, both in terms of social action and classical evangelism. So why are we there? Uh, we are there to support some of these local Christians, 
uh, we've got alongside our local church. We have an agency uh, that we are seconded to by BMS uh, International Nepal Fellowship. We'll tell you a little bit about what uh, we're doing with them later. Um, but they are really working with the poorest of the poor, the most marginalized in Nepali society. Still not got this right? <laughs> So how do we do that? Well, uh, we will tell you a little bit more about that once the children have gone out. I'm just going to leave you with this uh, slide. Uh, INF uses this wonderful verse as their strap line. INF is our agency there. Jesus says, I have come that they may have life and have life in all its fullness. And we love the beginning of that. I have come. Jesus came. He did a verb. He did an action. And he came to the world. And we find that's a challenge for us and a challenge for all Christians. For us, we have gone, we have gone to Nepal. But for everybody sitting here, there is an action that you can do to show people the love of God and help them enter that fullness that we have in Christ. We're going to pray for our children and young people now as they go out to their groups in just a moment. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for the children that we have in this church. We thank you for the blessing that they are. Would you just be with them now as they go and they learn about you with their leaders? Be with their leaders and uh, might they have fun and might they know your presence with them. Amen. Amen. Children, young people, off you go to your groups. We will see you later on. We're going to worship again in just a moment as well uh, before we hear uh, more from the vocals in just a little bit. While we're worshipping, the offering uh, box and, uh, and card readers are available at the back there. Offering is part of our worship. This is how we can give through what God has blessed us with to his work and his kingdom uh, in this place and around the world. So that will be available to there at that point. It's, it's good to be reminded that we also have the opportunity to give monthly through our standing orders as well. Some of us do it that way. And that, that is too, is that same thing. That's part of our worship. So maybe as we worship and uh, as you're considering how you give, maybe it's, uh, it's an opportunity to just think about that and, uh, and to pray that God would bless the finances, the resources that we at HBC have been blessed with. If you're able, do stand and let's come to God in worship. He has done great things. Come, let us worship our King. Come, let us bow at his feet. He has done great things. See what our Savior has done. See how his love overcomes. He has done great things. He has done great things. Oh, Father of heaven. You conquered the grave, you greet every captain and break every chain of oh God. You have done great things. We dance in your freedom, awaken the light. Oh Jesus, our Savior, your name is in high, oh God. You have done great things. Faithful, you've been faithful through every storm. You'll be faithful forevermore. You have done great things, and I know you will do it again. For your promises, yes, and amen. You will do great things, you will do great. Your free 
bigger awakened the light Oh Jesus our Savior Your name lifted high Oh God You have done great Let's sing hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, God, above it all. Hallelujah, God, unshakable. Hallelujah, you have done great things. Hallelujah, God, above it all. Hallelujah, God. Unshakable, hallelujah, you have done great things, you've done great things. Oh, hero of heaven, you conquered the grave, you free every captive, who break every chain, oh God, you have done great things. We dance in your freedom, awaken the life. Oh Jesus, our Savior, your name lifted high, oh God, you have done great things. You have done great things. Lord, you have done great things. Water you turned into wine Open the eyes of the blind There's no one like you None like you Into the darkness you shine Out of the ashes we rise There's no one like you None like you Our God is greater, our God is stronger God, you are higher than any other Our God is healer, awesome in power Our God, our God Into the darkness Into the darkness you shine out of the ashes we rise, there's no one like you, there's no one like you. Our God is greater, our God is greater, our God is stronger, God you are higher than any other, our God is healer, awesome in power, our God, our God, our God, our God is greater. Our God is stronger, God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, also the power of God, our God. And if our God is for us, and if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what could stand against us? And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what could stand against us? What could stand against Let's raise our voices. Our God is greater. Our God is greater. Our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer. Awesome in power. Our God. Our God. Our God is greater. Our God is stronger.
praise you, Jesus. Lord, we thank you. We thank you for who you are. We thank you for what you've done. We thank you that in our own strength, <laughs> we're just not enough, but in your strength, we're so much more. You are so much more. Lord, that we might just live in that place of strength, of, of knowing you close to us, knowing you as our healing, knowing you as our hope. Lord, we want to see these great things in our lives, in our community, in our world. We trust that you're at work, and we just ask for more, Jesus. Thank you. Praise you. Bless you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. Do take a seat, folks. A few notices for you this morning. Uh, the first one is that you may notice things are a little bit different downstairs to how they have been uh, in previous years. Um, <laughs> that is because the downstairs COVID restrictions are now have been changed. Um, the balcony is the place where we want to keep uh, for people that is a bit more spaced, a bit more uh, secure, a bit more safer in some ways. So the balcony is the place where if you want to go up there, you wear a mask. Down here, we're able to spread out a little bit more because um, we're having to squeeze more and more chairs in, which is fantastic because God is at work. And, uh, and having loads of new people come, which is great. Uh, but we want to keep that space up there uh, secure for people. Uh, so if you're going on the balcony, put on a mask. There is some by the door uh, to do that there. Uh, Matt is now in post in Barton and uh, started working. <laughs> His induction service will be Sunday the 19th, which is next Sunday. So at 4 o'clock at Barton Community Centre, um, Matt will be being inducted as the, the minister uh, of BCC. If, uh, if you want to go, you're invited. You know, you've been invited to go and be part of that celebration there. Uh, Steve, our, um, our regional minister, is going to be uh, preaching and leading in that service. So it would be fantastic to, to be there and support Matt and to support Barton and the work that God is doing in that place. So 4 p.m., 19th of June, next Sunday. Go there, be there. Um, marriage course, Christian, Johanna, you going to come and share? One of you, both of you? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, so yeah, Hannah and I um, joined the marriage course run by um, uh, Becky and Andrew Johnson, and um, uh, we were asked to come and give a bit of a testimony about what, what that is um, and let you know that we didn't have any problems in our marriage, and that's not why we went on the marriage course. But uh, the marriage course for me was a way for Johanna and I to deepen our relationship. Um, of course, a marriage is and was not problem-free, um, but our motivation for the course was not to fix anything. Um, I'd recommend the course for all married couples, and um, the desserts from Wayne and Liz are pretty good too. I also rec recommend it a lot because it's very practical and it gives an opportunity to invest in the most important relationship. Um, yeah, that's it. <laughs> Fantastic, thank you. So the marriage course, this is, a, this is the wrong slide, isn't it? Those dates have passed. Can't do them. Um, it's, I'm right, Monday, someone, Becky, uh, Andrew? Monday the, 20th. Monday the 20th of June is the first one. Uh, speak to, to Becky and Andrew if you want more information. Uh, do sign up if you can, it is a great course. Last thing, I'm an annual leave from tomorrow, so sort yourselves out. No, don't. <laughs> if you've got any issues, uh, do speak to Nick. Uh, any urgent pastoral things, then you can speak to James. Um, I say urgent. You know, if you can wait till I'm back, that's fine. <laughs> but um, yeah, I'm annual leave for the next week, so I'm sure you'll be okay. Excellent. Those on the live stream, uh, I'm really sorry, but we're going to be taking a break from the live stream for the next 15-ish minutes uh, while Pippa and Toby share some more. Um, go and make a cup of tea uh, and, uh, and put your feet up. But do come back and join us for the rest of the service. Um, there'll be a little video that'll play uh, that'll just inform you while, um, while we're doing that. So we'll see you in a little bit. Pippa. <laughs>
And uh, today we have Karen Roach from Wycliffe Bible Translators who's going to come and share in just a moment from God's Word. And I'm going to read uh, from her, the passage that she's chosen from Matthew 28, verses 16 to 20. So if you have Bibles with you, uh, turn to that. Matthew 28, verses 16 to 20. Great verses, great words. The Great Commission. Then the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Let's just pray for Karen. Father God, would you just bless Karen with your words now, that you would speak through her to us, and that her words might challenge us and change us for your kingdom's sake, for your world's sake, for the sake of your mission. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you for inviting me to speak, and thank you, Ian, for reading that passage. There is no doubt that this passage is a significant pronouncement. As Jesus was getting ready to ascend to heaven, Matthew tells us in verse 16, Matthew tells us in verse 16 that Jesus directed his disciples to the mountainside. From Sinai to the Mount of Transfiguration to the Sermon on the Mount, mountains are places where the most important instructions are given. Jesus brought his disciples one last time for something truly significant. These words are a command. This is why it is called the Great Commission. The biblical authors and the early church understood Jesus' final words to be among the most important sentences he ever uttered and the most significant instruction he gave for their missional identity. Before Jesus calls his disciples to mission, he reassures them in verse 18, all authority in heaven and earth has been given me. The mission Jesus is about to give is based exclusively and entirely on his authority. Therefore, go. Going implies being sent. John Stott argued that mission is not everything the church does, but rather describes everything the church is sent into the world to do. God does not send his church to conquer. He sends us out in the name of the one who has already conquered. We only go because he reigns. Make disciples. Jesus' followers are to make disciples of all nations. All nations meaning worshippers and followers from among all cultural and linguistic groups on the planet. We are sent to share the good news that will enable people to become disciples. We are not called to conversion. It's the Holy Spirit that converts, which leads to baptism. And baptism is an outward sign of repentance, forgiveness, and inclusion in God's family. Teach implies that Jesus wants more from his disciple than initial evangelism and response. He wants obedience, mature disciples, not just immediate decisions. And then comes the promise. Jesus reassures his disciples, I am with you always. Jesus' promises to the end of ages implies that the mission work continues to the end of this age. Such a promise would not have been possible if Jesus had envisioned, envisioned the disciples fulfilling the Great Commission by themselves. But what does the Great Commission mean for us today? These words were not only given to the original disciples, 
nor were they exclusively given to pastors and evangelists and missionaries. Therefore, every follower of Jesus Christ, as he commissions them, so he commissions us. If I'm a disciple, I am commanded to go and make disciples of others. The commission is not to wait for the world to come to us. It is to go into all the world. The Great Commission is equally about being sent to the world and about being called from the world. Go doesn't necessarily mean going abroad. As you know, I work for Whitcliffe. I'm a church engagement manager, and I contributed to Whitcliffe Mission by engaging with churches like HBC who support the work of Bible translation. Others are called to go abroad and work alongside various communities, some working remotely in the UK, and others are in finance and administrative roles. But we all contribute to the mission of bringing God's word to people in their own language so that they too can have an encounter with Jesus and their lives transform. Going means to live as a missional disciple within your everyday life. We are sent to every place and relationship in which we find ourselves, to our villages, our homes, our workplaces, and abroad. And a good place to start would be crossing the street to your neighbor. Make disciples. He expects us to make new disciples. And if we thought it was just for the first apostles, Jesus says we should teach these new disciples what he commanded us. This means that we demonstrate discipleship by how we live and by verbally communicating God's word. The good news is that Jesus promised to train us and to reach, to reach others for him. And in verse 20, it says to obey everything I've commanded you. Jesus, the one who has all the authority, promises he'll be with us to the end. So wherever we go, he precedes us. Whatever God is calling us to do, Jesus goes ahead of us. He's equipping, equipping us with supernatural power to pull it off. He's already at work. And this is a large part of the joy of mission, joining Jesus in bringing healing, loving, and transforming our community. Jesus in bringing, sorry, this means spiritual discernment, is at the center of any call to mission. So it would help to constantly imagine Jesus already at work, wherever we are doing mission and welcoming us into that place. This would also lead to proper confidence in our actions since he's the one who's given us all the authority. And it's, it's easy to fall into the danger of seeing mission and witness as a set of practices to do instead of a life to live in response to encountering Jesus. We start in different places, but we all believe in the good news of Jesus Christ, and that is worth sharing. Each of us can take steps in our calling to be a witness for Jesus. Imagine the gospel as a baton in a relay race. We have received the gospel, and we are now sent to pass it on. The passion for mission comes from our love for God, and this is where the energy of mission is generated, staying close to him in his spirit to overflow from us and remembering Jesus and being thankful for all he is and has done releases joy in our life. It will enable our witness to be overflow of our love for God and not just another on our to-do list. The passion for mission comes from gratitude Gratitude frees us to be generous and keep our desire to share Jesus with others. Here are some practicalities in developing and maintaining your passion for mission. One, ask the Holy Spirit to lead you into patterns of living and relationship which allows us to be the people Jesus is calling us to be, who leads others to follow him. The good news is that he hasn't left us on our own. In the same way the Father sent Jesus to reveal his love to the world and complete his mission, so he's sending us. Next, listen to God. I'm learning this, but allowing the Holy Spirit to lead, um, to allow the Holy Spirit to lead my thoughts and feeling in witnessing to others. And I have an example. When I was in South Africa, I actually worked with a project which was for the homeless. And my role was to, to preach and to hand food out to the homeless. And um, there was this particular lady who had just turned up to the project. And 
I walked past her the next day, and um, on my way back, I saw her standing there, and I said to her, how many big issues have you sold today? And she said, two. And me not, not knowing much about big issue, I said to her, if you sell four the next day, because I was quite surprised, she stood there the whole day and only sold two. I said, if you sell four, I will match it with four. And I'm not too sure why I did this, because honestly, I didn't have any money. I was depending on donations. And um, so the, the next day I saw her and she ran up to me and she said, oh, I've sold four. So I trusted her and I gave her the money. And then I went home and um, I felt the Holy Spirit was saying to me, go and sell big issue with her. And I'm thinking, this is crazy. I'm hearing, I'm hearing, this is not from God. <laughs> anyway, um, it took me three weeks. I'm going to be honest. I passed her every time. It took me three weeks to respond. And I went up to her one day and I said, I'm going to sell a big issue with you. And she thought I was crazy. So I went and helped her. And I was just amazed, actually, how hard it was and the way people treated you. And I actually went back a few times. But what I did, I used the skills I know in sales and, and get her to connect with the local businesses and try to get them to take, to, um, to take one big issue from her. So she increased her sales. And then I connected her to a local church and a local pastor. We helped her to write her CV, and she got a job and then found somewhere to live. And then she, in turn, went and helped the homeless and started to teach them craft. But it was a few months after, she said to me, do you know, when you walked up to me, I'd actually just come out of hospital. I was in hospital for about five months, and she was basically in a mental ward. And um, she came back, and her son had, had taken all the money from her bank account. She had nothing to live on. And so that's why she had to sell the big issue for survival. And she said, that day I was actually thinking of taking my life. But you came and said, if you sell four, she always reminded me what I said, if you sell four, I will match four. And I felt, you know, there was hope in living. So this is what happens when we listen to God. Seek to bless others, share, serve, love others in need, and pray for those you know who, have come to, who, who would come to faith. Ask God for ideas to bless them, a card, a word of affirmation, encouragement, a small gift. Pray that God will use it to open their hearts to him as you do this with his love. Share times with others. Spend time socially with those who are not Christian. Simple things like sharing a cup of coffee or a meal with someone can be a very personal experience. Don't do it with an agenda other than seeking to love and bless them. Or sharing with others must come out of genuine love. While we are with them, pray silently for God's blessing on them and ask if there's anything God wants you to understand and share with them. Respond to a sacrificial need locally or abroad in the same way you are responding to the work at Whitcliffe. When we go the extra mile for someone, it reflects how God loves us and can, it can deepen our relationship with him. See this need as an opportunity to show our love and care for, for people. Pray. Whenever you hear someone share a need and we can't do anything about it practically, we can offer to pray for them. And thank you for praying for Whitcliffe. Most of all, Pray for those who don't know Jesus. Be a witness. And being a witness for Jesus involves speaking for him and having conversation about faith with people asking questions. In this, we need discernment that the people's heart is receptive or simply God-prepared. Other ways are to invite them to a Christian event like an Alpha course, share a passage of scripture, or tell stories of what God has done in your life. 1 Peter 3.15 reminds us um, that we should always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope you have, but do this with the gentleness and respect. The key is doing something simple but spiritual with different people that shows where they are spiritually. It allows us to share in equal conversation rather than preaching. Not everyone will be receptive, but we also need to keep searching and blessing people until we find one who is ready to receive. Then we stay with them and help them on their journey. This requires the help of the Holy Spirit to empower us in our witness and lots of practical steps, persistent prayer and patience. Jesus is the good shepherd who knows how to lead people back to him. 
we need to learn how to do a part. And I have a personal experience, and this was through work. When I came to the UK, I was out of church for 10 years. And I was at work one day, and I was discussing with my friends. I wanted to see a popular film. I won't name the film. <laughs> and um, no one would go with me. And then this girl, who is a well-known Christian, um, came up to me and said she would go with me. And I was quite surprised. And um, my manager said to me at the time, you're not going with her. And I said, I'm not bothered. I'm going with her, Christian or not. And so we went and saw the film. And at the end of the film, in the car park, I was just you know, ready to just you know, drive home. Because we weren't friends, I'm going to be honest. I was just happy that she came with me to see the film. And I really admire her because she stepped out of her comfort zone, actually. Um, to, to minister to me, and I'll just say what happened. So in the car park, she said to me, um, I didn't only come to see the film. I was like, oh, God, here we go. <laughs> and she said, Karen, God has put you on my heart, and um, he's given me a word for you. I was like, wait for this. And, and she said, God said he loves you and he wants you back. And... There were just simple words, actually. She didn't preach to me, and I cried the whole way home. And um, long story short, the next week, you know, I joined the Christian group at church, and then she connected me to a church, which is HTB, and I was there for 10 years. And so, basically, my heart was prepared, and she got used her at the right time. Be accountable. Healthy accountability involves sharing hopes and plans for the future with someone and getting support and encouragement to, to achieve this. And I went to South Africa, as I said, on mission in 2014, and I had a mentor. A mentor is very important to me as a part of my faith journey. But I also had the opportunity to meet um, Father Desmond Tutu, I should say the lot, late Father Desmond Tutu, and um, because I went to Mass every Friday at St. George's Cathedral, and he frequently took Mass. And then after Mass, we go for breakfast. And I was struggling at the time, and I was moved by the need in South Africa. And so I asked him, first of all, I said to him, there's so much to do. And he said to me, do the little bit of good where you are, Karen. It's those little bits of good put together overwhelms the world. I didn't know at the time he was quoting me, one of his favorite quote. And then um, I asked him, how can I improve my spiritual life? And he said, fast twice a week and give alms. And I, I turned to him and I said, twice a week? And he said, I'm 82, Karen, and I fast twice a week. But he has a smoothie. You can see in that photo, he has a smoothie um, because of his health. And I listened to him. And that's how I ended up actually becoming involved in the, um, the homeless project. And he, that's not a very good picture because I was learning to take selfie at the time. And... I love that picture because one of the things I, I love about um, Father Desmond is that, you know, being around in my experience is faith, is humility, and his sense of humor. So I, I, I was learning to take selfie, and I saw everyone taking selfie with him. So I said to him, can I take a selfie with you? And I told him that I wanted to send it to a friend of mine who was in Switzerland that I wanted to visit. And, um, and he turned to me and he said, you're not using me to bait a guy, are you, Karen? <laughs> We both laugh about it, so yeah. <laughs> the call to mission is not something we do on our own, but in partnership with the Holy Spirit. God has given us the courage to send us out as his representative. This deepens our relationship with God and our dependency on him, and that's why prayer is central to mission, as it is the Spirit who works within people's hearts. We're sent to prepare the way for others to meet Jesus and we have the reassurance that the one with all the authority has got us. God is already at work in the world, preparing people's hearts to hear the good news in the same way he prepared my heart at the time to hear the good news. In Luke 10, Jesus talks about the harvest being plentiful. This is a picture of many people being prepared for the gospel, ready to be saved. But Jesus also said there is a problem. There aren't enough laborers out in the fields. And all we need is to be obedient in going and allow the Holy Spirit to direct us. Mission is a work of love in which we genuinely share our lives with people and meet them where they are and at their point of need. It takes time for some people to come to faith. It took me 10 years. 
and to journey with, with, with them um, in their step of faith um, is important. The challenge is how to create a spiritual connection with people, and this may mean spending time with them, but most of it is the Holy Spirit's work. I would encourage you to pray each day that you will be sent to be Christ's ambassadors for love. Offer yourself to God to be used for him, to give you the opportunity to share his love with others. Ask God to fill you with his Holy Spirit and give you love for his people. Ask him to help you to see where he is at work and pray for God to prepare the hearts of people you will meet. And one of the devotionals that I listen to actually every day is Lectio, Lectio 365. And I find the prayer at the end of it very, very helpful. And it says, Father, help me to live this day to the full, being true to you in every way. Jesus, help me to give myself away to others, being kind to everyone I meet. Spirit, help me to love the lost, proclaiming Christ in all I do and say. So my prayer for you is that you recommit yourself to your love for God and the great assignment he has given you. And I pray that you may hear the vision of mission each time you gather in church and be able to share with your, your testimonies to encourage and support each other. I also pray that God will rejuvenate your passion for the mission of his kingdom and open your eyes to the spiritual needs of those around you and the vision of HBC to be a loving and transforming community. When we join in God's mission, we glorify him and we watch expectantly to see him move in power and do immeasurable more than we can seek, ask, or imagine. Amen. We're going to respond in a few moments to what we've heard this morning through communion. Um, I'm going to invite the band back up and we're going to worship while we prepare that. But the challenge is there to us, isn't it? To love. To show love. And through love, let God work. If you're able, let's stand and we're going to sing and then we're going to respond in communion.
Spirit, lead me where my trust is without borders. Let me walk upon the waters wherever you will call me. Take me deeper than my feet could ever wander. And my faith will be made stronger in the presence of my Savior. Spirit, lead me when my trust is without borders. Let me walk upon the waters wherever you will hold me. Take me deeper than my feet could ever wander. And my faith will be made stronger in the presence of my Spirit. Lead me. Spirit, lead me where my trust is without borders. Let me walk upon the waters wherever you will hold me. Take me deeper than my feet could ever wander. And my faith will be made stronger. The presence of my Savior. And I call upon. Let's raise our voices. I call upon Your name. And I will call. When oceans rise, my soul will rest in your embrace. And I am yours, and you are mine. Please to take a seat. We come to this table, this symbol, this promise, this hope. We come to take communion in response to what Jesus has done for us and to share it with the world. Communion is more than just a a ritual to do. It's something that we take with us from this place out those doors. That Christ did what we couldn't. That Christ did what they can't. And that we are his hands and feet. So as we take communion... We're joining with Jesus in that mission to bring hope, to bring love, to bring freedom into his world. Come to me, Jesus says, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Paul, but Lord God, we know that we're part of a world that is in pain. We know that we're part of a world that that is groaning for salvation, that is groaning for hope, that is groaning for freedom. And Lord, you called us, your church, to be your hands and feet, to go and to bring hope, to go and to bring love, to go and point to where that freedom is. So Lord, we pray that in this meal, in this sharing together, you might challenge us personally, corporately, how we are your witnesses. 
how we are the bearers of love into this world. Amen. Can those who are serving, please come and join me at the front. If you're seated in the balcony, we will be bringing the bread and the wine up to you. We will bring the bread around first and take as you wish. And then we'll bring the wine around and hold the cup and we will drink together. Jesus took bread and he broke it. And he said that this is my body broken for you. Do this in memory of me. Eat the bread and find nourishment and freedom for your soul. After supper, he took the cup and said, This is my blood poured out for you. A new agreement, a new opportunity. We retain the cup because Jesus died for us as a community as well, as a people, as a world. His blood was spilt so that we could have freedom. Hold on to the cup. And we will take together.
Blood shed, freedom bought, love shown for us to show to others, to his world. Amen. We've come to the end of our service. We're going to sing together one final time. Hallelujah, your love is amazing. Do stand if you're able. Standing at the changing, your love is a mountain from beneath my feet. Your love is a mystery, how you gently lift me when I am surrounded. Your love carries me. Hallelujah! 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 Your love makes me sing. Hallelujah, 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 your love makes me sing. Your love is surprising, I can feel it rising, all the joy that's growing deep inside of me. And every time I see you, all your goodness shines through. I can feel the star song rising up here in me. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Your love makes me say hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Your love makes me say Hallelujah, hallelujah, your love makes me sing. Hallelujah, 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 your love makes me sing. Father God, we thank you heard today. We thank you for all you've blessed us with, from hearing stories from around your world, from what you are doing, from the hope that we're seeing. Lord God, we just want to play our part in that. Lord, we pray a blessing on the Vocal family. We pray a blessing on Karen and on Wycliffe Bible Translators. Lord God, we pray a blessing on all our other mission partners who we haven't heard from today. Lord God, might we know our part that we play in that. Go with us, Lord Jesus into this week, into your world, we pray. Amen. God bless you all. See you soon.
Jesus shall save you. Your name lifted high, oh God. You have done great things. You've been faithful through every storm. You'll be faithful forevermore. You have done great things. And I know you will do it again. For your promises, yes, and amen. You will do great things. You will do great things. Oh, hero of heaven, you conquer the grave. You free every captain and break every chain, oh God. You have done great things. We dance in your people, awaken the light. Oh Jesus, our Savior, your name lifted high, oh God. You have done great things. Shake and pull. Hallelujah, you have done great. 